Florida Atlantic University's Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institute has been involved in marine mammal research and conservation for over 20 years. Not only is our marine mammal team on call 24-7 to rescue dolphins and whales in distress, but they also work together to understand the health and well-being of these iconic animals. Located in Fort Pierce, Florida, our 144-acre campus has many facilities for marine research. Today, I'm going to take you on a behind-the-scenes tour of the FAU Harbor Branch Marine Megafauna Necropsy Lab. A necropsy is an autopsy performed on an animal. At FAU Harbor Branch, the data and tissue samples collected during necropsies help our researchers determine the cause of death and support ongoing marine mammal conservation efforts. The necropsy lab is 825 square feet. To compare, the traditional operating room is around 600 square feet. The lab is this large, so it can accommodate big animals like whales or dolphins, and it's able to hold multiple marine mammals if a mass stranding event occurred. At the center of the necropsy lab is the exam table. There are two custom designed stainless steel tables. This table can hold up to 1,000 pounds and is about 8 feet in length, whereas this table can hold up to 2,000 pounds and is about 10 and a half feet in length. The tables are well equipped to hold marine mammals from dolphins to small whales. To give you an idea, the average weight of a bottlenose dolphin is 400 pounds and a pygmy sperm whale is 940 pounds. Once our team receives the call that the ambulance is on its way with an animal, they need to prepare for its arrival. Prior to setting up the lab, they don their scrubs, boots, protective glasses, masks, and gloves. Once they're dressed, they're ready to set up the lab. Many supplies are needed to perform a necropsy. All of the supplies are organized in cabinets around the lab. Our team keeps the lab in a ready state because they don't always know when they'll get an animal in. It takes them between 5 and 10 minutes to prepare the lab. To prepare, they lay out the instruments needed on the counter so they can easily grab what they need. Some of the tools include knives, hooks, forceps, scissors, scalpels, scalpel blades, loppers, and cutting boards. They also prepare containers to store tissue samples. Typically, our team collects over 200 tissue samples during each necropsy. To ensure they collect everything, they work with a checklist and carefully label the vials and containers before the necropsy begins. They also have extra vials available if they need to collect additional samples. Some other things our team does to prepare include making sure the correct table is out, the formalin container is full, and confirming supplies like zip ties, tags, and trash bags are fully stocked. Once everything is set up, they are ready for the animal to arrive. When the ambulance arrives, it backs up to the garage door, the door is opened, and the animal is transferred to the table. Because marine mammals are large and heavy, the animal is transported by crane, which has a 4,000 pound limit. This is sufficient to move these large animals. Normally, our team performs the necropsy when the animal arrives. They prefer to do this because the tissues are easier to study when they are fresh. If that's not possible, they will store the animal in the walk-in refrigerator overnight and complete the examination the following day. Next, you're going to see actual footage from a necropsy on a Rizzo's dolphin. She was found stranded on a beach in Miami, Florida and brought to our facility for a post-mortem examination. The Rizzo's dolphin is an offshore dolphin, meaning they live in the deep open ocean rather than coastal areas. That is why she resembles a whale. The team starts with a visual inspection of the animal and takes a lot of measurements. Upon inspection, they found shark bites. Although the bites did not cause death, the team measures them to try to determine the shark species it may have encountered. This gives the researchers insight into predator-prey interactions between dolphins and sharks. After doing a visual inspection, the team takes skin and vitreous samples, measures the thickness of the blubber, and collects a few blowhole swabs and tooth samples. 
These samples can be tested for genetics, toxins, infectious diseases, and vitamins, among other things. This information is used in conjunction with other samples to evaluate health and try to determine the cause of death. Blubber is the specialized layer of fatty tissue just below the surface of the skin. On deepwater mammals, this layer is thicker because they dive deeper, so it keeps them warm, stores energy, and increases buoyancy. Our team measures the thickness of the blubber by cutting a small incision and using a flexible ruler. This gives the researchers insight into the animal's body condition and nutritional status of the time of death. After the external examination and sample collection, a veterinarian cuts into the side of the dolphin to access the internal organs. She starts with a small incision around one of the flippers and cuts down to the base of the tail to create a window into the body cavity. She needs to cut deep enough where the side flap can be removed and she has access to the internal organs. Once the internal organs are accessible, our team does a visual inspection to see if they notice anything out of the ordinary. Next, samples are taken from each organ. The samples are trimmed into smaller pieces and put into labeled vials. Some of the samples are preserved by adding formalin to the vials, while others are placed in the ultra-low freezer for cryopreservation. These samples are evaluated using histopathology, toxicology, infectious disease testing, and other diagnostic modalities to better understand how and why the animal died. Very detailed notes are taken throughout the exam to accompany the tissue samples so a complete post-mortem report can be generated, which represents a medical record for that animal. There, our veterinarian records morphological diagnosis of any lesions observed. This is an interpretation of the most likely pathological processes based on any gross or microscopic abnormalities observed. In this case, it was found that this dolphin had two different kinds of cancer and a bacterial infection. In the archives, there are over 11,000 marine mammal tissue samples. These samples are used to support current and future research so scientists can continue to learn about these animals. Histology is the study of biological tissues under a microscope. Pathology is the study of diseases. Our veterinarian examines marine mammal tissue samples microscopically to be able to appreciate changes in diseased tissues at a cellular level and compare these to the normal cellular architecture of healthy tissues. The following photos show tissue samples at the cellular level that have been taken by our veterinarian. These are relatively healthy liver cells with chronic mild inflammation which could be due to infection and or toxin exposure, among other causes. In contrast, these are unhealthy liver cells that had excessive water or lipid buildup, likely caused by a negative energy balance due to decreased food intake prior to death. The blood vessels of the liver are engorged with blood. This is a pathological process called vascular congestion, which often occurs in multiple organs during stranding. These are relatively healthy lung cells with mild congestion. Comparatively, this shows unhealthy lung cells, severe inflammation, and airways clogged with excess fluid in a dolphin that died with severe bacterial pneumonia. Typically, samples from all stranded animals that we necropsy are analyzed for diseases and various toxins, such as heavy metals and plastic leachates as well as signs of human interaction, such as fishing gear entanglements or boat strike wounds. Some of these diagnostics are performed on campus, while others are performed off-site by partner organizations. The results are available to researchers working on a variety of studies and help them understand the health of these important animals. Over the past 20 years, more than 180 marine mammal necropsies have been performed on the FAU Harbor Branch campus. Our team also conducts field necropsies of animals too big or in too remote of a location to be moved, and assists many other Marine Mammal Stranding Network members with necropsies whenever help is needed. To date, our team has necropsied seven different species of dolphins including bottlenose dolphins, shortfin pilot whales, a type of oceanic dolphin, rough-toothed dolphins, climbing dolphins, melon-headed whales, Atlantic spotted dolphins, and pantropical spotted dolphins. They have also necropsied seven different species of whales, including 
dwarf sperm whales, pygmy sperm whales, humpback whales, sperm whales, Gervais beaked whales, Blainville's beaked whales, and Cuvier's beaked whales. The most common species they encounter is the bottlenose dolphin, followed by pygmy sperm whales. Other animals they have completed necropsies on to support collaborating research include a hooded seal, loggerhead sea turtles, green sea turtles, and a hammerhead shark. This work is essential because marine mammals are difficult to study in the field, so each time that our team has the opportunity to conduct necropsies, they gain insight on many aspects of the animals, such as their anatomy and physiology. Performing necropsies helps them to determine causes of death in many cases, such as diseases or human impacts. This information, in turn, allows us to continue supporting the protection and conservation of these majestic and ecologically important animals. To learn more about this work, you can visit fau.edu hboi or take advantage of FAU Harbor Branch virtual resources, which include lesson plans for educators, presentations given by researchers, behind-the-scenes virtual tours, and more. You can visit FAU Harbor Branch to take a campus tour and drive by the necropsy lab and marine mammal ambulance, or explore the marine mammal exhibit at the Ocean Discovery Visitor Center. This research is supported by the Protect Florida Whales and Protect Wild Dolphins Specialty License Plate Program, which is administered by the Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institute Foundation. You can support dolphin and whale research and education programs by purchasing a plate online or from your local tax collector's office.